Good morning, and welcome to Little Rock Original Free Will Baptist Church. I'm Jerry Godwin, and I'll be bringing your Sunday School lesson today. We are so glad that you chose to join us again, and we would like to, you to encourage others to tune in to uh, our broadcast and also hit the, su su the su <laughs> subscribe button in order to um, be informed of these uh, broadcasts. And um, I want to welcome and say happy, birth happy Mother's Day. I'm sorry. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, how much we appreciate our own mothers and grandmothers and wives that are mothers. And um, we appreciate you and all the women out there that are the Christian women especially that um, are so strong in our churches and our church in particular here at Little Rock um, has a great influence on women and, and is so greatly appreciated. Um, today's lesson is entitled Open Hearts. It's taken from Acts chapter 9 verses 32 through 43. That's Acts chapter 9, verses 32 through 43. And the teach, teaching objective today is we of the church need to open our hearts to care for one another. We need to open our hearts to care for one another. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, please have um, those names on your mind that you want to lift to uh, God in prayer in those situations and praise items. We have several praise items and prayer needs uh, that we're aware of and take the time to just by mentioning names and situations to lift them to a God who really cares about your needs and our needs. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege of bringing this Sunday school lesson. Lord, we pray for all the individuals that are viewing and the situations that they have on their minds. God, we echo the Psalm, of Psalm 23, that you um, make us to lie down in green pastures or and lead us beside of still waters and restore our souls. And, and God, we know and, and we appreciate the fact that our souls do need to be restored because of our tendency to wander, and, but wander in our hearts and commitments. God, grant us um, that we might be more faithful and uh, obedient to you. Loving and faithful God, open our hearts to love and serve others. That is our purpose, to, to serve you and, and to serve others. And that will even be our commitment for eternity, that as we enjoy eternity with you, that we will be uh, uh, serving you. And Heavenly Father, we uh, pray that you open our hands as instruments of grace and love to those around us. And Lord, as we pray, we lift up the prayers of individuals um, that are viewing at this moment. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers. We know that you are aware of our needs even before we lift them up, but God, we lift them up to you that we might feel stronger and our faith might be increased. God, hear these prayers and, and we praise you for the items, the praise items that have happened in this past week. And we pray for individuals that still need you. We lift them up to you, Lord, because we know that you are a loving God and a God of grace and mercy. 
Thank you for this privilege of bringing this Sunday School lesson to the viewers and throughout the world. We give you the praise and the glory for it all. In Christ's name, amen. Now, as you can tell, um, <laughs> my tongue is not working with my brain this morning, but we will try to grab a hold of it right now and, and go with this. We're in the ninth chapter of, of Acts, and last Sunday we talked about open eyes and about Paul's, Saul's conversion on the way to Damascus to persecute and, and, and arrest Christians um, because Saul was, was not convinced that Christ was the Messiah. But after his encounter with Christ on, uh, on the way to Damascus, he was committed to the cause. And as he had continued to preach in the synagogues, some people were getting tired of of Paul and tried to kill him. And so he was sent back to Jerusalem. And the people were still afraid of him and questioned if his transformation uh, to being a follower of Christ was legitimate. And you know, we... We, we see this even in the 21st century of wh where we have people that um, former lives were none of one, ones of grace of Jesus Christ and then they accept Christ as their Savior and sometimes we do question this um, but God's and but we, at the same time we see people who have uh, been converted and they live the remainder of their life being a follower and obedient to Jesus Christ. So at this time um, in the book of Acts, Luke kind of transitions for a while from Paul back to the apostles. Now the apostles are still teaching um, throughout Jerusalem and Judea and Galilee and Samaria. And Peter, the head of the disciples, is back at the forefront and it has led him to the towns uh, near the Mediterranean coast of Linnea and Joppa. So that's where, where we began um, today's lesson. Now, one little bit of background. Philip, the apostle, had planted several churches around Joppa, and Peter is um, strengthening them and, and teaching them. So he's left Jerusalem to go in support of these new 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 churches. And so we say now as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in um, Lena. Now I have a joke with a friend that's done a lot of traveling and when he travels he kind of um, wanders where I would stay on an interstate and go where I'm going and visit and then get back on and go somewhere else. He, he has a tendency to, he, 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 uh, he likes to go and see a lot of things uh, ad hoc, but this is not what Peter was doing. He had a plan and he was really on a preaching tour. And so he had a plan to go to these churches and then he found a man named Aeneas who had been bedridden for eight years for he was paralyzed. Now, Peter had made preparations and prayed for this man 
he, he didn't just go up to him um, arbitrarily. It reminds me of one of my favorite stories in the book of John at the, at the pool when Jesus came and there was this man who had been an invalid for 38 years. And he said, do you want to be well? And the man said, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes ahead of me. And Jesus says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. And here we have the same similar occurrence with Peter. Uh, when this man who had been bedridden for eight years and they said he was either paralyzed or his legs were in such a weakened condition, condition from not having walked for eight years. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. Now, notice what Peter didn't say. He didn't say, I heal you. So many times on television we see uh, these people that are faith healers and many times they will say, um, you know, I have healed you. Peter never claimed that. He knew his power was coming from Jesus Christ, that, that um, Jesus had transmitted that power to his apostles to heal in his name. And immediately he got up. So this wasn't something just like at the pool in Jerusalem when Jesus healed the man for, uh, and they had been sick for 38 years, been paralyzed for 38 years. It was an immediate um, healing. And the, the, all the residents of Leda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now, when it says, make your bed, it was like a mat, and he rolled it up. No longer was he going to have to use it for convalescence, but he was just going to use it for sleeping, and it said to... Um, Make your bed perhaps means set the table. Many times in this time frame, they would lay down a mat and recline to the side and to eat. And once again, he didn't depend on others to bring him things, but miraculously, he had been healed. And it says that all the people of uh, Lena and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. That is speaking in hyperbole or exaggerations that not everybody in the town, we're sure, uh, were not saved because of this miracle, but many were. And the word got out of the power that comes in the name of Jesus Christ. And it says, they turned to the Lord, not to Peter, not to the apostles, but they turned to the Lord because they recognized that the Lord was the reason for um, the man's healing. Now we get into the second instance where, okay, well, first of all, Lena was about 25 miles northwest of Jerusalem. If you're familiar with where we are right now, 25 miles northwest would be in Rocky Mount, uh, North Carolina. So that would be quite a, a good walk. It took several days to walk 25 miles. And now we're in the town of Joppa, which is about 10 miles further next to the Mediterranean Sea. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek, which in Greek is Dorcas. 
Now, she was uh, was a disciple. Um, she may have been just like Aeneas, may have had some Greek heritage because of the uh, Hellenistic, which is Greek-speaking Jewish community. And she was devoted to good works and acts of charity. Tabitha had a reputation of giving, um, making co uh, coats and, and cloaks and giving them to widows and graciously and mercifully doing this as in this society um, was the um, commitment to look after widows and orphans and she did this um, apparently quite quite often and as I studied uh, this scripture I have to admit I, I thought quite often of um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta who was a teacher and today is National Teachers Day so um, this is on, on this Wednesday uh, Happy Teachers Day to all of you out there and she spent her life looking after the poor in India. And Tabitha was committed to the good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. And the scripture doesn't record what her illness was. Um, after you died, I don't guess it really matters what your illness was, but she died. And the people started making preparation. They washed her and clean, cleaned her to prepare for the um, perfumes and stuff, um, prepare her for, for burial. And also it says that a warm bath was used in case there was some life left in the person that it would arouse them and um, from their near-death experience. But in this case, Lydia had been bathed and she had been taken to a room upstairs, probably for better ventilation, and um, she was dead. Now, Lydia was near Joppa. The disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So here, these other two disciples walked three hours to Joppa and requested that Peter come um, without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas, being Tabitha, had made while she was with them. Now, I want to say one other thing about these tunics and coats is that uh, Tabitha was fleshing out her faith. And that's what we as Christians are called to do. We are called to accept Christ as our Savior, but once we have accepted him as our Savior, we are to flesh out, to tell others about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. 
Now, here the widows are weeping and wailing, and I'm sure grieving in um, a, a tremendous way. And there's nothing wrong with grieving. And I, I read a quote on grief yesterday from uh, Jamie Anderson, and it touched me, and, and I want to share it with you. It says, grief I've learned is really just love. It's all the love you want to give but cannot. It's all the love you want to give but cannot. All that unspent love gathers up in the corners of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in that hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. Grief is just love with no place to go. And we all have experienced that. And here, these women that Tabitha had touched is grieving tremendously over the loss of their friend. Now, like Jesus had done before, when Peter was here, he had all these people in that room and he asked them all to go outside. Just Y'all just go on out for a few minutes and let me be with Tabitha. And then he knelt down and prayed. He prepared for this by praying to God. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord because of the miracle of healing Tabitha. And in the name of Jesus Christ, he told her to get up. Notice the connection between Aeneas and Tabitha. They were both told to get up and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ to those around them. And many people believed in the Lord. It takes us to gather as a church. The as in Paul, Peter, was being led to reach out to the Gentile world. We are, are challenged and directed to reach out to all of our world. We who know Christ need to share his love and grace with those that don't know Christ. But listen, we who know Christ also need to share his love and grace to others that know Christ that are going through difficult times at this moment. And we don't like for that in today's world. 
listen, when all else fails, quote Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, in Life Together Made, listen to his words. Christians need other Christ Christians who speak God's word to them. They need them again and again when they become uncertain and disheartened because living by their own resources, they cannot help themselves without cheating themselves out of the truth. They need other Christians as bearers and proclaimers of the divine word of salvation. They need them solely for the sake of Jesus Christ. The Christ in their own hearts is weaker than the Christ in the word of other Christians. Their hearts are uncertain. Those of their brothers and sisters are sure. So when Christ is sure in your heart, share it with others that don't know or that are unsure. God opens our hearts so you are, um, some of you that never thought you would be in church are comfortable with those that are different than ourselves. God opens our hearts and shakes us out of our isolation, negativism, and narrow vision. God wants us to gain worldwide vision. And one thing that I didn't expect when God led us to do this online Sunday school lessons, and we were already doing online church services and Bible studies, is it's not just for this church, it's for the message to be shared worldwide. And the last thing that was recorded in today's lesson is that Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Well, a tanner was one that tanned hides. And for a person to touch anything dead, even a dead animal, was made themselves unclean. And the whole process of, 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 of tanning was unclean. And, but yet, Simon the Tanner was where God wanted him to be in order that God could talk to him in a vision and lead Peter to be preaching the gospel message to the Gentile world. Not only to the Jews, but for those of the Gentile world. And, and this is revolutionary. That's what we, we should have a church here at Little Rock and worldwide that is inclusive of those, no matter their race, nationality, ideology, we need them. We need to tell them about Jesus Christ. And that's what today's lesson is about, is that we should have open hearts. And that he talks about the transforming power of the gospel. Nothing is impossible to God, with God. He demonstrates the universality of the gospel. It's for women as well as men. It's for Gentiles as well as Jews. He says in Acts chapter 10, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him is acceptable to him. I leave you with these words. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore.